Um, welcome to the signal processing class. We are, um, we are going to have an overview of low pass and high pass filter design. Um, next Wednesday, March, March, um, March 25, there will be an exam. Um, there are two question modalities. One is uh, true and false, and the other one is multiple choice. So we are going to have a quick overview of low pass and high pass filter design. Okay, let's um, do some exercises like those you are going to be facing on the exam. Okay, let's say um, let's say you are given the following question: determine. Um, the separation between angular separation between adjacent poles in a Um, third order low pass filter. So here, uh, my recommendation: you should uh, bring with you a some paper and a pencil. So here, uh, you might be facing multiple choices or just to two options, but uh, this one is more a multiple choice. So here, the recommendation is you take 180 degrees, and this value has to be divided by the other, because um, this is a third order filter. This 180 degrees has to be divided by three. So that gives 60 degrees. Okay, that is going to be the answer. So. You are going to be presented multiple choices, and you have to pick this one. But you have to take care because um, this value might be presented in radians. So in that case, the uh, correct answer will be pi over three. So for ex uh, this is an example of a question that you will be facing on the exam. Uh, the exam is going to be um, you are going to find it in Blackboard. You're going to have 60 minutes to answer that exam. Uh, there will be 25 questions. And remember, there will only be two different question modalities, uh, true and false, and the other one is multiple choice. Okay, so let's say instead of uh, having a third order filter, either way, low pass or high pass, now you have a fourth order filter. So in that case, the correct answer uh, is that in which 180 is divided by 4. So the final answer will be 45, right? 45 degrees. Is that clear? So, if, um, if the choices are given in radians, they could be, I mean, the choices could be mixed. You, uh, you can be, you might be facing different answers with radians or degrees. So, for example, if, the, if one of the choices is given in radians, the answer here will be pi over 4 radians. Okay, so let's uh, discuss 
another example. So let's say you are given a transfer function. So that is a transfer function that you are given on you are told that uh, that transfer function represents a third order in Butterworth in um, high pass field. So you are given this um, expression, and you are also told that uh, this transfer function represents a Butterworth third order high pass filter. Okay, um, then you have to you have to decide if this uh, statement is true or false. So, what the answer will be here? I think you have been thinking that the correct answer this is true. Okay, let's say that instead of the uh, initial expression, you are given a different expression like this. So, in that case, the statement is going to be false, okay? You have to decide that that statement is false, okay? And we know that because a high-pass filter has um, zeros at zero, right? So that means the numerator here should be a polynomial. And the same applies in the um, in the other stage. Okay. Okay. For example, let's say you are given the same expression, but now there is um, there is going to be a different question. So the question is this: um, Is it possible? The implementation of that filter um, so is it possible the implementation of the filter by using sorry by using one second order stage One second order stage, um, let me fix this. So, is it possible to design to, um, the implementation of this transfer function by using just one second order stage? What would uh, the answer will be here? Let's uh, think. Um, if we observe that expression, we know that the, uh, the expression um, is separated in two different stages. One is a second order stage and the other one is a first order stage. So in that case, the implementation by using, using just one second order stage is not possible. So, the answer to this question is going to be no. Okay? So, what should be um, 
the question, so the answer is going to be yes. This filter um, is going to be implemented by using two stages. One stage, which is uh, second order, and the second stage, which is first order. Okay? So, instead of having that expression, let's say we have a different expression. Let's say we have uh, that expression. Okay? And we are asked um, the same question. So, is it possible the implementation of that filter by using one second order stage? The answer is no. That is a hot, uh, sorry, that is a low pass filter, but um, it requires uh, two stages. It requires a second order stage and a first order stage. Okay? So, remember something which is very important. Here, if you are asked um, that, let me erase. Let's say here, um, you are told that the implementation of this filter is accomplished by using a sound key stage a solid key circuit, and you are also going to be using an RC circuit. So, by using that, that filter, that circuit, and that one, is it possible the implementation of that transfer function? The answer is yes, okay? The RC circuit is going to be used for the implementation of the first order expression and the sound key circuit is going to be used for the implementation of the second order transfer function. Okay. Um, let me write a different question. Let's say you are told that um, we are interested in designing a third order Low pass, um, low pass filter with a cutoff frequency which is 10 radians. Okay, so the answer here, sorry, the question here is going to be if that expression represents the frequency, the normalized version of the circuit. Okay, is that clear? Let me ask uh, the question again. So we are given that, that expression. Um, we are told that we are interested in the design of a third order, okay? It makes sense, the expression is third order. Uh, low pass, it makes sense so far, because this is low pass. But we are also told that um, the cut of frequency here is 10 radians. So is, that, is this expression the frequency, the normalized version, or the frequency normalized version? How do we answer that question? It's obvious that um, this expression does not represent the frequency, the normalized version. This expression corresponds to the frequency normalized version. So far, this expression represents a third order low pass filter, but so far, the cut of frequency for that filter is not 10 radians. The cut of frequency is just one radian. Is that clear? Okay. So, if the question is, is this a frequency normalized circuit? The answer is yes. Okay, let's say we are told that we are interested in a kind of frequency of 20 radians on 
we are told that we are interested in the final frequency, the normalized version, and we are given the following expression. Okay, let me let me do it better. Okay, so um, here the expression of uh, the denominator, we have S squared plus 10 times S plus 400, okay? That is the, um, the second order stage of this transfer function. The first order stage um, is expressed as 1 over S plus 20. Is that the correct answer? So uh, the answer here is not. The expression so far does not represent the frequency of the normalized version. There is an error there. The error is that this is very important. The constant part in the numerator should be the same as the constant part at the denominator, okay? So, once again, if we are told that we are interested in a third order low pass uh, filter, that expression so far is correct. And we are told that the cutoff frequency is 20 radians. That expression is completely correct, okay? And, and that expression represents the frequency in the normalized version, okay? So, let me erase here, and let's explain um, the difference between the frequency normalized version and the frequency the normalized version. Okay, in the frequency, the normalized version, we are going to have a magnitude response where the minus three decibels take place, take place at 20. Okay, this expression for response to this um, magnitude, okay? The order is third order. So for example, if we are given the expression and we are given the plot, the curve of the magnitude response, and we have to specify if, uh, if, the, if the figure represents the expression the answer is yes, okay? But what if, instead of having here um, 20, we have just one, okay? So the expression does not represent this magnitude because that magnitude represents a, the normalized, the frequency normalized version of the transfer function. Okay, let's, um, let's do another exercise. Let's say we are given the following expression. We are given four poles. I'm going to write the expression. That is one pole, and then we have another pole, a 
Okay. Uh, then we are given another ball. And then we are given another ball, the last one. Okay. So we are given four different balls. Okay. Um, now we have to specify if those balls represent a fourth order low pass filter. The answer is the answer is yes. Okay, we know they um, we know they represent a fourth order low pass filter because we have the, the first um, the first correct um, specification here is that uh, we have four poles. Any fourth order filter should have must have four poles. Okay. Um, another correct, important characteristic, uh, there should be conjugate poles. So if we observe, this pole is complex and the corresponding, the corresponding conjugate one is the second pole. Okay? We also observe that the third pole and the fourth pole are conjugates. Okay, so far um, we are deciding that they represent a fourth order filter, water word filter, but um, there, there is another um, property that has to be, um, has to be satisfied for those poles. So they represent a fourth, water word fourth order filter. And that, um, that characteristic or that requirement has to be the angular separation between poles. Okay, we know that the separation between poles should be 45 degrees. Okay, 45 degrees. If we observe um, this pole and this one, they are separated 45 degrees. The separation between them is 45. So that makes sense, right? Another thing, um, you know, here, something that is going to be uh, a guide to find the right answer is going to be the pole pattern. A plot of the poles. If we're talking about a fourth order filter, okay, uh, we know that poles are going to be placed in the left um, part of the plane, okay, they are going to have four poles, they are going to be placed over a circle, so um, the radius equals one, because the magnitude of the poles is one. Okay. Um, we know there should be two pairs of conjugate poles. So this one and this one are conjugates. Um, and this one and this one are conjugates. Okay. Um, Separation between them, between these two poles, should be 45 degrees. So the angle here is 45 degrees. So take half of 45, and that makes 22.5. That is the angle between 
the negative real axis on that ball. Okay? So, if this angle is 20, let me, let me do it better here. Okay, if the angle there is 22.5, okay, so that means the final angle for that pole is going to be 157.5, okay? Is that clear? So how do we determine the angle for that pole? How can we find that angle? Okay, take uh, the first angle and subtract from it 45, and that gives 112.5, right? So the answer is correct. But let me give you a different example. Okay, uh, there we are observing there are three poles, okay? When you have an odd number of poles, one of them is real, okay? That makes sense because here we have a real pole, and the other poles should be uh, com complex and conjugate, so we have Two conjugate poles. Okay, but something is wrong here. Something um, is not making sense so far. What is that? Okay, I know you already have the answer. What happens here is that those poles are in the right part of the plane. So a bottomward filter is not unstable. Unstable. A bottomward filter is a stable system. So that is why that um, those poles are, are wrong. Okay. If you observe uh, separation between poles is 60 degrees. The separation between the first pole and the last pole is 60 degrees. The same happens between that one, those two poles. So, you know, the pole pattern here is this one. Okay, one pole is 60 degrees, the other one is minus 60, and the other one is zero. Okay? So, um, those poles are incorrect, okay? Now, let's talk about the low-pass to high-pass transformation. Okay, once again, we have a third order. Low pass uh, filter. So one pole is going to be at 120. Okay. Another pole is going to be placed at 180. 
which is the same as minus 1. Okay? And the third part is going to be placed at 240, which um, is the same as minus 120. Okay? Those are the poles of a third order low pass filter, which is frequency normalized. That means the cutoff frequency here is one. Remember something. The cutoff frequency, um, if you observe the pulse, the cutoff frequency is specified by the magnitude of the pulse. So far is one. Okay? So let's say the cutoff frequency now has to be three radians. So that means that the magnitude should be three. Okay, we are talking about a third order low pass uh, filter and the cutoff frequency is three radians. Okay. So the question is, um, we have to find the corresponding poles for a third order high pass after applying a transformation. So how do we find the poles for um, the corresponding high pass filter? Okay. So let's remember that um, the transformation from low pass to high pass filter happens by changing, by replacing S by the inverse, okay? So if that is the low pass to high pass transformation, okay, and we are given the, the low pass pulse, what are the corresponding high pass poles? okay? We have to find the third order high pass we have to find the third order high pass poles okay so if we apply this uh, transformation to the first pole what's going to happen okay What's going to happen is that the magnitude is going to be changed. Instead of, instead of being 3, the new uh, magnitude for the high pass fi uh, filter is going to be the inverse of 3. Okay? The inverse of the exponential, the inverse of the exponential, um, is the same as but uh, the angle now is negative. Okay? So let's go to the second pole. If we apply this transformation, so we have to take the inverse of the pole. Okay? So the magnitude uh, is going to be changed for the low pass field, um, for the low pass pole, the magnitude is 3, but for the high pass Paul, the magnitude is going to be the inverse, okay? So what happens if we take the inverse of the exponential? We have to uh, take the negative of the angle, okay? But do you know something? Minus 180 is the same as 180. So either, um, either case, minus 180, or 180 is um, correct, a correct answer. So now let's go to the third pole. If we apply the low pass to high pass transformation, okay, we have to take the inverse of the pole 
So the magnitude is going to be changed. Instead of having a, um, a value of 3 now, the magnitude is going to be 1 over 3, okay? And if we take the inverse of the exponential, okay, we have to take the negative of the angle. So the negative of minus 120 becomes 120, okay? So those are the poles of the third order high pass filter after applying the low pass to high pass transformation. So what do you observe? So initially, the first pole was three times e to the 120. That was the first pole, right? The second pole was three times e to the 180. Okay? And the third pole was three times e to the minus 120. Okay? Those were, those were the original poles. Let me separate those. Okay? Observe what, observe the difference between uh, this set of poles and the second set of poles. What did you observe? If you observe the only thing that change that changes here is the magnitude. Okay? Actually the angles remain the same, right? Do you observe that? Is that clear? So observe um, the difference between uh, this one uh, this one is just uh, the magnitude. The magnitude of one of them is the inverse of the magnitude of the other. Uh, compare, compare this pole and this pole. So the only thing that is changing here is the magnitude. They have the same angle, right? So the magnitude of one is the inverse of the magnitude of the other. And let's compare this pole with this one. What do you observe? The angle is the same, okay? What's changing here is just the magnitude. The magnitude of one is three, and the magnitude of the other is one over three. So this um, uh, this is going to be clearer if we observe um, the the plots for both cases. Let me erase. Okay, um, let me do it better. So the, the butterworth balls are placed over a circle. <clears throat> because the filter is third order, there is a real ball. And the other two balls are conjugate in complex. The magnitude, which is the distance, or the radius, is going to be 3, right? So far, that is the, uh, those are, that is the set of poles for the low pass field. Observe, one is at 120, this one is at minus 120, and that is real, and the angle is 180, right? So that is the low pass case.
Okay? So now let's get the plot for the high pass poles. So they are going to be, you know, because of the results that we got, they are going to be placed at a circle. They are also, um, the angles remain the same. So we have one pole is at 120, the other one is at 180, and the third pole happens at minus 120, right? So the difference between the low pass poles and the high pass poles after the transformation, right, is that um, the magnitude, or let's say the radius, right? Here, the radius um, equals three. So here, the radius is going to be changed, okay? The, ra the, um, the value is going to be the inverse. So the radius here is going to be one over three. So if you want to get the pulse, if you are given the pulse of a low pass, and you want to get the pulse of the high pass uh, very fast, the only thing you have to do is adjust um, the radius, okay? And the new value is the inverse of the uh, radius for the low pass, okay? So the same happens happens if you are given the high pass poles, okay, and you are asked to get the low pass poles. So the plot is the same, but the radius is going to be um, the inverse of the original uh, radius, right? So let's do another example. So let's say we have a fourth order, four order, low high pass filter, okay, this one is high pass, a high pass filter, right, um, it is fourth order, okay, so we know the poles, all of them are complex. And there are two pairs of conjugate poles. Okay, the angle for that pole is going to be 157.5. The angle of that pole is going to be 112.5. Okay, the angle of that one minus 112.5. And the angle of that pole is going to be minus 100 and minus 157.5, right? So the radius here, because the cutoff frequency, um, because here we are told that um, the cutoff frequency is um, one over three. The radius. Okay, let me. Let me change here this. Okay. So let's say the cutoff frequency is three, right? That is the cutoff frequency, right? Okay. So how do we get the low pass, the low pass poles. Okay, the plot is going to be the same. Okay, the poles are going to be at the same angles over a circle, but the circle is going to be smaller. Okay, and why is that? Because the radius is going to be smaller, because the radius here. Is going to be the inverse of the radius here. So here, the radius is going to be 
1 over 3. Okay? The angles are the same, but the radius uh, changes. Okay. So, um, in the exam, there are going to be 25 questions. Um, as I told you, there are going to be um, two different question modalities. A true and false, and the other one is going to be multiple choice. Okay? You are going to have 60 minutes to answer the exam. Okay? Um, the kind of questions that you are going to be asked are uh, related to the uh, overview that we just had. Okay? Um, one suggestion here, take a pencil with you on paper so you can do some uh, computations very quickly. You don't have to decide here. You just have to decide to take a choice, right? In and I think that's it. Remember, um, you are going to be given um, transfer function expressions. Uh, you have to specify the, uh, the order. Um, you might have to specify the poles. Let me let me do a quick problem. Okay. Uh, let's say you are given that uh, expression. That is a transfer function, right? So, uh, is that a uh, low pass or high pass field? What is the answer? That's right, that is a high pass field. How do you know that? Because of the numerator. You know, observe that is a second order high pass filter, okay, with a cutoff frequency. What is the value of the cutoff frequency? The value of the cutoff frequency is 1, right? So let's say you are given the following expression. Sorry. Observe the same denominator, um, denominator right? Uh, the difference here, what is the difference? Then the numerator, right? Okay. They have the same denominator. Um, this one, this one is low pass. Here, because of the, uh, of the constant, right? This one is uh, high pass. Okay? Okay? So, if you are asked where um, the poles of this function are, the answer, sorry, where the zeros are here, the answer, are, the answer is all of the zeros here are at zero, right? So for this case, okay, if you are asked about the zeros here, the answer is all the zeros are at infinite. How many zeros? Just two, okay? And we know that because the number of zeros equals the number of poles. Okay. Let me do another one. Uh, this is a longer expression because this represents a fourth order filter. Okay, that is the expression, right? So that is a second order, um, sorry, that is a fourth order filter. 
Okay, that, that is a fourth order filter. Observe, how do we know that? The poles are one, uh, the angles 157.5, 112.5, Okay, is that high pass or low pass? That is low pass. Where are zeros here? They are at infinity, okay? Um, because the constant term is one, okay? What is the implication of that? The cut frequency is one, right? Um, you can also say that uh, this is a frequency normalized filter. Anytime you have a filter with a cutoff frequency that is one, okay, that is the case of a frequency normalized filter, right? Is that clear? Okay, let me change the expression. Okay, uh, that is a different transfer function. Okay, I have done some modifications. Um, the first order term now is multiplied by 10. Okay, the constant term is multiplied by 100. Okay, the same applies in the second stage, observe, the first order term is multiplied by 10, and the constant term is multiplied by 100. So, what is the meaning, uh, the physical meaning of that? The physical meaning here is that the cut frequency is not one. This is not a frequency normalized filter, okay? The cut of frequency is 10, right? So that means that um, this is the uh, frequency, the normalized version of the low pass filter. We are talking about a fourth order low pass filter with a cut of frequency at 10 radians. Let me do an adjustment. Oh, okay, but first, so the implementation, so if you are asked, uh, a question like this, um, if, you, if you are told that this filter, the implementation of this filter is done by using three stages, two second order stages, two second order stages in one first order stage, uh, that is false. We don't need one first order stage for the implementation of the transfer function. We only need two second order stages, right? Okay. And we're going to finish very soon. We're going to finish. So I'm going to present to you a new a new transfer function, uh, a large expression. Okay, what did you observe? We're talking about we're talking about a uh, high pass filter, right? 
all zeros are at zero. Okay? It's fourth order because of the angles. 157.5, 112.5, okay? Fourth order, high pass filter. Um, this is not frequency normalized. The cutoff frequency is not one. The cutoff frequency is the color frequency, think about it. How do you find out the value for the color frequency? I'm going to give you the answer. I know you have the answer. The answer is 20. This is a frequency, the normalized version. So we are talking about, we're talking about a magnitude response like this. Where, where what? The color frequency is happening at 20 radians, right? Okay, is that clear? How do we know that? Because of this value, okay? Because of this value. Here, the first term is multiplied by the color frequency. And the constant term is multiplied by the square of the color frequency. Okay, finally, let me ask you the last question. So, because the plot, um, the kind of frequency takes place at 20 radians. So, change that value from radians to hertz. The answer is the kind of frequency in hertz equals 20 times over 20 over 2 pi, which is the same as 10 times 10 over pi, okay? And that is uh, the, the cut of frequency in hertz, okay? So, <clears throat> if, um, uh, so watch uh, this video, okay? Watch this video, um, I mean, <laughs> You already have watched this video. Watch it again, okay? Um, there are going to be 25 questions, okay? Um, you have to find poles. You have to convert poles from low pass to high pass. Uh, you have to determine if the expression is low pass, high pass. You have to determine if the zeros are at zero or at infinity. You have to determine if the poles are in the left side of the plane or the right side of the plane, okay? Remember something, a Butterworth filter has um, poles in the left, um, on the left side of the plane. Uh, poles are separated by 180 divided by the order. Um, remember that the magnitude of the poles equals the radius. The magnitude of the poles equals the cutoff frequency. The difference between poles in the long pass and the high pass after a transformation is just the magnitude. The magnitude of um, the high pass poles is the inverse of the magnitude of the low pass poles. In, uh, what else? Okay. Um, of orders um, include a real pole. Even orders, uh, even order filters do not have real poles, okay? Um, even order filters have conjugate poles, right? Um, of order filters require a first order stage um, even order filters only require of second order stages. Okay, so watch uh, this video. Um, uh, I will be uh, doing a conference with you for questions and answers. And the exam will take place on Wednesday, March uh, 25. Okay, so. That's uh, that's everything. Um
and see you later. I will uh, I will upload the next lecture, which is Butterworth Filter Design. Bye.